Lamar Jackson seems like the type of quarterback the Niners are looking for in Trey Lance. Wouldn't it make sense to get Lamar Jackson in free agency and trade Lance? The Niners are not waiting for Trey's development. Yeah, for, for, from my perspective, he'd be a good fit. I mean, they want to run the ball. He's the best ball carrier in the league. Uh, he can throw those horizontal passes, those screen passes. Got a quick release. I mean, I to your point, what though. Looking for. I, 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 I don't, I don't okay. think so. I think okay. they some of the things that they identified with Trey Lance coming out of North Dakota State was a guy that can go on the center, turn his back to a defense, flip it around, throw the ball with timing. And he has a good skill set outside of that. He's definitely not Lamar Jackson type athlete. But it's like, hey, we can build off of these other things and he does these things well. Let's continue to build on that. I, I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, well, we want Lamar Jackson. Like that's He even want. said, you right? Want you Lamar want Lamar that Jackson can throw like yeah, he said it. Drew Brees. And Lamar doesn't throw like Drew Brees. No, he doesn't. And he actually, like, when you watch him, because sometimes it's like his completion percentage isn't bad, but he'll, it gets miss weird. Miss some throws. Yeah, yeah he'll it, miss some throws by a And at this yeah. point, he's throwing a lot of passes, but it does, it's like, well, how'd you miss that? How'd you miss that? Yeah. And he kind of gets lazy with his uh, mechanics, mechanics sometimes, his feet, and he just kind of yeah. throws with all arm, off platform when That's he doesn't true. have to. Then he'll drop a, a beautiful pass, but yeah. there's a lot of them where it's like, ah, I think there's some things here that would frustrate Kyle. If he just already had Lamar, then I think, you know, yeah, it'll be awesome. But just to go out and get Lamar when you have Lance, that you're True. trying, I, I, again, maybe they're not trying to develop Trey Lance. I don't know. But if they are, that wouldn't be the route I'd go at all. Or not even try to trade him away. Build but look at, all the, look at all the success teams are having with, you know, modestly priced quarterbacks. I've been talking about, we've been talking about this for years. Quarterbacks are getting too expensive. And spending 40 to $50 million a year on a quarterback who's barely top 10 makes you the Cardinals, you know, makes you the Rams, right? It's not what you want to do. So if you have a legit, great, great quarterback, then pay him. Otherwise, you do better with Geno Smith than Russell Wilson. You know, I'm not saying pay Geno Smith $40 million, but I'd rather have him at seven than Russell at 40 or 50. And, and the fact that we're talking about Geno Smith right now is, you know, because I remember when Geno came out and right. know, I was there with him on the Jets. And I remember Geno, uh, you know, over really the last what, eight years since mm -hmm. then and how with the context surrounding his name and what that was like and now how he's talked about because well he had an opportunity a real opportunity mm -hmm. and a coach who believed hey, that, that's our guy and everybody's yep. like, oh no you got drew lock and he's like nah geno smith is our guy and you see what he's doing now so it's been awesome to see him uh go somewhere where where they truly believe in him and they've surrounded him with some uh good weapons nice running game if as well I feel like this could become a trend. Instead of just spending hella money on the next quarterback who has promised but hasn't really proven himself, like why don't you give someone like Geno Smith a chance or, or, or just draft another quarterback? Because Geno Smith is 31. He's been around. He might have been in your – I mean, he's been in Seattle for a few years. Like why not give him a chance? I think because a, a lot of people don't have – they don't have the, the conviction within themselves to put that type of confidence in bringing in a Geno Smith That's and true. feeling like they can do what Pete Carroll has done true. with Geno you know, with another quarterback. It's true. Most, yeah. court, I mean, it's like, like it's look at the impressive. fans, right? They, yeah. they can't see past what they see. So mm -hmm. fans are really like a lot of people in front offices where a lot of them can't really, and I think it was uh, Mel Kuyper who said, scout with anticipation. Yeah. Right. A lot of fans can't scout with the, the same with people in the front office. Yeah. So they're not going to see Geno Smith and expect this because they they their expectations are just so low for him. They're not going to be like, oh, we're right. going to hang our season on him, unless you are a coach like Pete Carroll who says, you know what, I can get the most out of guys. Yeah. Is it possible? that the way defenses have evolved where like 10 years ago it was very much a single high type of league and now it's very much a two high league and take away the big plays that a quarterback like Russell Wilson whose whole game is like scramble around and hit a few deep passes a game like isn't necessarily going to work where you now need a quarterback who actually checks it down and goes and like makes his way down the field uh you know methodically is that is that what you need now I mean if you don't have Patrick Mahomes Right, well, and I was going to say, even Patrick Mahomes, you, right. he needs to do that, right? And that's one thing and that's that where they got Juju. To, a yeah. lot more too high. All right, yep. let me take these underneath passes, and there's going to be yep. a few passes game where he does really push the ball down the field. And I think those few passes stand out more so than a lot of the underneath type things that he is doing. Hell, you know, everybody raved about Justin Fields' performance last week. He completed one pass over eight yards. Right. 
Exactly. And two is having a great year. He doesn't exactly have a big arm. So Nah. Yeah. Uh, he's powerful one. Kind of leaving a lot. He, he's he's uh, Yeah. There, there are a lot of underthrown balls, which I get. I mean, throwing the two of the fastest guys in the league. So That's true. Um, but, yeah, there's not a lot of, on those balls. Powerful one says if Trey can play, he has to play. I don't care how well Jimmy is or isn't playing or where the Niners are in the playoff race. They can't keep putting this off. He needs to play now. Now is in as soon as he's medically cleared. Wow. I'd like it, but I don't think the team would like it. I don't, I don't know. It, would it be fair to Trey? Hey, bud, you're medically cleared just like Elijah Mitchell. Get your ass on the field right now. Yeah, I don't know. Nah, I would go the approach and NFL different from college, but you know, I watched Alabama and Bryce Young, he had hurt his shoulder. And he was kind of a game time decision. They ended up going with the backup. But Bryce Young was on the field in pads. So I think in the in a pinch, in an emergency, he could play, but he wasn't the starter going into the game. And maybe you can go about it that way, where you know, eventually, oh, he's medically clear. All right, let's get him out here. He's on the field, but we're not gonna play him unless we absolutely have to because we want to give him just more time to recover. Yeah, that sounds good to me. 